Hello, neuroplasticians. I'm very excited to be here today with Sue Stevenson. Sue, how are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you, JJ. No, it's so good to have you on the, the channel. I'm really interested to, uh, to spend some time with you. Your reputation precedes you in a good way. And, <laughs> <Thank> uh, you. <laughs> and um, your, your, your books and your training and your coaching, it really is considered best in class. So, so and I don't want to I want to set you up for um imposter syndrome opportunities, yeah. but it's it's <laughs> but it's really great to have you here. But I think I mean let's start at the beginning of what got you interested in uh, applying neuroscience and building your own neuroplasticity. Maybe take us back to the dark ages when things needed to change for you. <laughs> Um, I don't know which dark ages I'm going back to. No, when, when you got when you got your um, anyway, I'll let you speak. I'll just listen. Not at all. Um, I got interested in the brain as many of us do because mine kind of went a little bit crazy for a while. That's right. And I don't. I didn't know why it was going a little bit crazy. You know, <laughs> headaches and you have stuff going. I'm like, what's going on here? So um, basically, I. I I took time in COVID to figure out why on earth um, having something wrong, what caused that? So I began to write my a book and the book is written for people like me who felt they had to push through. The, the phrase push through is really important. Mm -hmm. We had to push through in COVID. We had to push Very through good. people who do dialysis or who are on chemo, we'd have to push through every day. I'll just get through today. I'll just get through another day. And um, so this concept, and as an executive woman, I was pushing through exhaustion, travel fatigue, presentation mm. after presentation. You had to be on all on the time. On your top game. Yeah. Top game, 100%. I did nine years nonstop. I would go home after eight weeks, wow. having been on the road. And then wow. somebody would appear at my door, a courier with another ticket, and another little ambient on top so that I could no fly way. to another country and present the next morning, but I could sleep okay in the plane. So um, I learned about ambient and the impact, the negative impact that had on sleep. So all of these things built up and built up over time. So when I began writing, I began researching more and more about what might have gone wrong. How did I miss all of these signals that people um, face, but that sometimes they recognize as a problem, right. I did not. So um, I wanted to write and to help people become aware. It was about awareness. Okay. And um, so I wrote a book that was a blend of science and story. I wanted to really understand the science so that I was writing from a, as much evidence as I could, not Love just it. personal story. So blend of science and story. And my basic belief is that we can change and we can take steps to change. And so how do we do that? How can we take either our thoughts, our beliefs, our behaviors, our habits and change many of them? And I realized I had to change a lot, but the brain can't handle a lot at once. So how was I going to manage this transition and mm. which changes were the most critical so i kind of figured out how do you change your brain which ones are more important um but learning that the power to change the brain really is is neuroplasticity and i love the, the reference that you made to behavioral change um maybe it's cognitive behavioral maybe it's cognitive emotional behavioral but at the end of the day i'm a behavioral scientist um, so tell us uh, about what behavior changes facilitated that neuroplasticity, Sue. Um, some real basics when we're, we don't think about, I, I often think about the social brain. And I think because, social change is so important as well. Yeah. So important. And because I'd been doing this crazy, crazy travel and crazy work hours and losing, you know, connections with many of my friends. And I oh. am a social person, but I just lost them. And then, you know, I'd be exhausted or too exhausted to go out. And so I declined. So the first thing I mm. did 
literally the day after I got diagnosed that I had a um, potentially life-threatening um, problem was I went and got a dog. That sounds weird. And then, well, that was not a human, but it got me moving. It got me- So important. Changed sure. my static sitting. I mean, I do a lot of standing in my chair. Right. Stop sitting, move, get out, go out, talk to people with dogs. Brilliant, brilliant. And I'm sure you've met, I'm sure you know Liz very well and her, and her friend called Murphy. Or, right. Yeah, anyway, I distract myself. Sure, sure this is getting, so interesting. I was going to say then, you know, I thought, well, how do you get friends back? So I thought, I'll have a dog naming party. So I just built on basics. So I needed to move, to eat, to socialize. So what do I need to do? The dog was foundational for all of that. And then begin mm. to tackle the harder things, you know, those things that are so deeply ingrained. Um, so, for example, um, I began learning about toxins. I invited a friend over and I went pretty dramatic. And she helped me throw out every piece of makeup, every piece of cleaning material, every piece of fabric that was not natural. Wow. Everything in my house that had toxins and chemicals, every one of them. Wow. Well, particular lipsticks and makeup and stuff. Oh, how? Anyway, I'll, I'll stay away from my lipstick story, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you about I'm going to make that, a note. Lipstick that, that, story. That, we can save that story for Halloween. But um, but anyway, but I'm also interested to hear what you're doing professionally now. I mean, people are, you know, they're interested in, in your work and you know, maybe tell us a bit about the book or tell us about your practice and your your training. And I don't know, just give us a shallow dive into a day in the life of laughing with Sue, whatever that means. <laughs> well, thank you. Laughing humor is very important. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> and that's one of the things I've learned, that how humor can change your state. You can't laugh and mm. be anxious in the same moment. So unless, you, unless, you, unless you're on stage and you're doing stand-up. <laughs> but still in that moment. And I think the anxiety is switched. There is a. You no, know, I, 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 I want to just interrupt you for a second. But I have a dream, ah. and my dream is to do stand up. Ah. And I don't, I don't know if I ever will get to it. I don't know if it actually is a dream, but it is kind of like a mischievous hunger lust. <laughs> um, and the, the 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 idea is to use the science of neuroplasticity and build that into humor. Um, and, you know, there are, are so many opportunities to use the science, he says so cunningly, to make a joke about what the brain does. And, and in your, 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 your work as an expert in, in laughing and humor, and the social power of, of this is, I don't know, I want to just get into this for my own pleasure, Sue. So tell me about the conference around humor. Tell us a bit about your work in this environment. Please humor me. <laughs> um, well, we I have a colleague called Karen Buxman. She has named herself as the world's only neurohumorist. And we've got to bring good. her in here, by the way. Please, I'll do it. So I think it would be a laugh to meet her. She's fabulous. So we co-wrote a white paper, Humor and Coaching. Love it. And I wrote it from the perspective of the brain. So I brought the brain and the behavioral elements, and mm -hmm. she brought the, she's been studying humor and the brain for 30 years. Oh, so I can't wait to meet her. Can you share that, that paper in the NPN Hub? I think it'll be great reading, at least for me, and I whoever will. else wants so you can share it with Shireen or even me. I can drop it in or you can drop it in if you're in the mood. But yes, I'd love to read that. I will share it in the hub. But for now, someone can just go to coachingwhitepaper.com. Okay. It'll come up with a turquoise box and then you just enter your email. Coachingwhitepaper.com. Yes. I'm in. I hope you're listening. There's an opportunity for our research hub to look at that. Yes. Thank you, Sue. Now, we are going to, um, the more I've learned about research, we're actually going to expand the population and we're going to be a bit more robust. Uh, we've only got about 216 people so far, and we've noticed some gaps. So we're going to be more robust in our, our second round of the research. So um, there is a whole community within the NPM that are interested in looking at research. So Amin, as I mentioned, is leading that community. Mm. So in a, in a month or so, we're having a conversation around that. So 
Please, okay. please, please bring your handicrafts to the marketplace. Will do. Will Very do. good. So, yeah. And the um, so we, we are always talking about brain and humor. Um, and we have um, uh, so the Association of Applied and Therapeutic Humor um, have really got we've got a research arm, which Karen and I have been part of called the Illuminati. Wonderful. And Wonderful. we look every month at what new research comes out linking humor um, and, and the brain, humor and well, humor and anything to do with the research. And usually it's health. Health is a big one. All right. So we work on that. And then so we have a conference coming up in April in Denver. Uh, the Smile High Conference and uh... <laughs> is it is it is it on? It's it's not um, going to let us go down the the, the Matterhorny Road. You're but welcome. In, in to join in for that. No, no, no. I mean, please, please tell us. Please well, drop the information into that. But I'm, I, I mean, if I can get over, where is it going to be held? Denver Curtis Hotel, the fun most fun hotel in the world. Every floor is themed. So we have a theme on on uh, music, on on cartoons, on Barbie. <laughs> oh, but I don't know if you've seen the Barbie movie. What a legendary movie! Anyway, I distract so anyway, myself. The is, you know, about one hundred and sixty people often, and they're both interested in the humor research for education. Um, you know, I talk a lot about the brain. We've got a lady who's written a whole book about neuroscience and humor. So I wow. will bring those. <clears throat> is, is there a neuroscience level at the conference? Um, not fully, but a lot of us do talk because what we're, we're, we're learning more about is how humor changes our brain and allows us therefore to change more of our habits and change our behavior because of the way that we, we use humor. Mm. I'm so, I'm so amped about this. Maybe we can get a neuroplastician level um, just to, yeah, just to, are. just to have a laugh about the neuroscience around the brain. Right. So I, mean, I, I, I think that's enough about the conference and you know, Denver is a funny place in its own right. But I'm interested, I'm interested to learn more about the, the possibilities uh, and the impossibilities that you speak about of neuroplasticity and how it relates to coaching and the body and the brain and social and emotional dynamics and health and well-being and behavior change so I'm, I'm really looking for a an overview of what would sue do if she was asked to overview her own book so give us give us a shallow dive into what the the new book's about sue um so the the this book this is the new yeah book. this yeah. that's the new one right yes this is the new one um and and in it I, I talk about neuro strategies. So that's a I phrase I coined. So these are strategies um, that I introduced for healing, for humor, and somebody who really just wants to reimagine their whole life. So there's lots of, uh, of ways of thinking of it. And I bring together now uh, groups of currently mostly executive women, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. and, and we have something called Conversations with Sue. And we sit and we talk about, um, in fact, I have something right here conversations with sue and uh we talk about a number of topics oh it's so awesome hold it closer i love the graphics brain health overwhelm mastering stress humor wellness happiness that is so brilliant i love it um, sue that is a great card so yeah people bring new research they they talk about their own journey they talk about what are they learning about the brain and how can they um mm -hmm. Make change and then people support each other with sustainable change and and accountability and how they're doing with changing their habits because we mm -hmm. know it's a long haul it's not just oh i want to change that let's change it sure sure it's it's not a switch it's a it's a habit it is yes um yeah so, so i that, mean um, sorry to give us an example and actually don't do it now because we'll never you and me will never get out of this i'm wanting to you know to have a a shallow dive into your book and hear more about it but maybe we should actually have it as a book reading um mm, event like in that. the hub so yeah yeah I'd i know you you're you're a great reader and i know the work that you're doing with children is so important as well so <clears throat> i don't know a book reading a, a round table maybe a master class around humor maybe everything above um i don't know i love all of those i am yeah, very I'm here to share, I'm here to learn, 
I'm here to connect with like-minded people. I'm just so excited about all of the different directions we could go. You know, one miracle at a time. Let's 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 have a let's have some information and a reading session around your book, and then let's have a discussion or a roundtable, either as second part of that event or as a second event. Mm. I don't know how much reading would you like to get through in us in that. How how long would you like to read for? Sometimes I think it's worth like reading, you know, for five minutes and then discuss. And okay, then cool, cool. Read and then discuss. And then people, then you could say, here's a list of five topics. Which one would you like to go to now? I love it. And we just go that way. We can flex. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so I'll just follow your lead on this. I haven't, I haven't, uh, I don't know how to do this. So obviously you will do a great job. So let's, let's let, um, Shireen come back to and set up a date. I don't know if she has any dates that she shared with you yet. Has she given you any? Not yet. No. Okay. Anyway, we will we will we will get you on the on the on the speakers uh, roundabout and get that. Yep. So yeah, and this is going to be so much fun. Yes. Another, um, I mentioned to you that I I started the San Diego Brain Club, and this is our hat. So I do have to. Oh, up. that's the coolest thing. I do have to that up. is so cool. Where did you find that? Did you make it or? No, I, I wish I could say I made it. No, I got it online from me and my co-founder Ariane. Oh, wow. and... I'm so eager to have one. It's it's the neuro nerd cap of the year, isn't it? The best. And I, I, love I, have, it. I have my shirt. It's all neuros. There's a picture of the brain. I mean, I, oh, I... you're 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 at the top of neuro paraphernalia. I love it. <laughs> uh, I love it. Club, I was going to say we have this brain club, and the structure kind of would lend itself to some um events within uh, the mpm mm. so for example we, we we have a topic every month uh we do meet face to face but it doesn't mean it can't be virtual and we we take a topic so for example last month was the brain and the disorganized mind right. and you know we 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 if you're on zoom you can have a glass of wine you could you know just but it's a conversation um people don't and we give out papers in advance so we post like 20 research articles or videos or things people to learn. And then they bring their own ideas and we discuss and we debate. And then we have brain healthy food. And mm. the food is labeled, what does it do to the brain? Like, you know, almonds or Brazil. Oh, that is so cool. Millennium yeah. from Brazil nuts. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're looking to kind of figure out, could we expand that? My co-founder wants to take this to prisons, to Africa. She wants to expand this whole wow. concept around I mean, the world. I mean, I mean this is actually like a, like a great opportunity to have that discussion in the NPN hub and to say, you know, what, you know, what is the, what can we facilitate to get this, this forum out? I don't know, we we'll obviously do it on, on Zoom, but where are you, where is this, where about in the world? Are you in California? We're in California right now. We, we're really just in San Diego, but um, you know, I've got people in Canada saying, can we start a brain club? We've got people all over saying, can mm. we start one? And we're trying to think, do we want to just give them the information and they start it and we just connect loosely or do we want to make it more formal? I think we're in the loose, the loose direction. I mean, get that going within the NPNM. You're going to get so many people gung ho for that soon. We can definitely, you know, we've got you know, hundreds of members already and they're all going to be or not all, but there's definitely going to be an interest because these people are curious about the same topic and having that forum is exactly what we are trying to do as well. So let's scrum down with your friends, make them uh, join the NPN hub as well so we can, I will so we can stop. That. Yes. Very good. Well, you know, maybe there's some people in uh, San Diego that can, that can uh, trespass into your Brain club and oh, um, they're always welcome. Always, always, always welcome. I'm trying to think who's in San. Anyway, I'm distracted. Let's <laughs> let's focus for a second and let's get this uh, the session about your book in the calendar, and we can we can have fun with that, and we can enjoy the learning from you. So I don't know. Let's round up there, Sue, before I carry on too long. Is there anything else that I, you wanted to share, or anything else that I've missed, or? What do you I think, think? In that last question you asked about coaching, and I have not mentioned coaching, and that is the basic of my business. <laughs> I right. Coaching. 
what is interesting is when so recently I you know I got invited to be interviewed by um, an executive he's picking his coach and during those discussions I always say how much interest do you have in the science behind behavior that's the way I phrase it normally very cute I like this I like this and uh, this particular client he selected me and he said I selected you because of the evidence based and the science <clears throat> so I began working with him I worked with him yesterday and he said I am so happy that you bring that science into the conversation he said because for example he didn't understand how his behavior he's a brash big New Yorker and oh. he fixes it, 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 it is first time Donald <laughs> No, uh, we're not going there. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't resist, sorry. I, know, I love it though, I love it. Um, and he said, he said, I didn't understand that I'm actually creating threat. Every time mm. I say this or I do that, I create threat. And I didn't understand that they may no longer be fully listening and fully mm. engaged in what I'm saying because I've caused a bit of a, a diminishing of their attention. And he said, I just love that I understand the implications of my actions from a brain perspective. He said, mm. now I know how I've got to change. So we're now focused on getting into the... There's another line of conversation that I'm going to mention, I'm not going to go into, but this is the topic that a lot of neuroplasticians struggle with. And that should you lead with the science, or should you pepper your coaching with it as it comes in? But it sounds like what you did is a very elegant slash intelligent way of, of informing your coaching practice with the science. So yeah, do you I recommend do you, do you recommend that neuroplasticians should lead with that? Or what, what is your take on it in your own work? I ask permission. So I establish... So I start by I going into structure. How much structure do you like? So I kind of get them thinking, what do they like and their preferences? And then I say, how much science would you like? And they go, oh. I said, how much brain science would you like? Oh. Mm -hmm. I said, would you like, as we go through our engagement over the next year, would you like us to talk? Would you like me to bring up something when I know that it supports what you're saying? I went, yeah. And so I, I establish their level of interest. And I found that most people engage me because of that. I mean, there's actually like a whole discussion just on that. We've got people who say, I'm a PhD in neuroscience and I do brain coaching, stand by. That's, that's what you bargained for if you got me. And there's other people that say, oh, I won't mention the brain because it might intimidate them or it might be not what they're here for. So the way that you framed it in your coach friendly language is definitely something worth exploring in the in up and let it, but we've, there's enough on the plate or in the uh, neuro hat on your head <laughs> that we can get lost in. So let, let me try and round up and let's focus back on doing the book reading and having a discussion and all shall follow said caesar or whoever made that quote i can't remember but thank you so much for the, the fun conversation so i can't wait for our next one uh, me too me too very good okay i'll let you go thanks again my friend i'll we'll speak soon in the next round table thanks sue I take care thank you bye-bye